Hey guys, the first few parts of this series will cover a lot of the fundamentals of aviation that are essential in understanding how to maneuver your aircraft. I also want to make note that this topic of dogfighting is massive. There are a whole lot of things to cover, and a lot of them work together. In the interest of time and sanity, I have tried to break them apart at least as best as possible and in categories that make sense. However, there is some overlap with topics that I may not want to go into depth in a particular episode in the series. So in those instances, I will briefly go over the topic and we will cover it in more in depth in a later episode. In order to understand what to do in a dogfight, we need to understand the basics of aerodynamics on an aircraft. This is the base for everything we will build upon in this series. Without understanding the aerodynamics, there will be no way for us to self-correct our mistakes when reviewing our performances in either track replays or preferred method of tack view. Let's quickly go over the four basic forces acting on an aircraft in flight. First we have weight. This is simply how much the aircraft weighs based on the force of gravity. It will always pull the aircraft towards the center of Earth. Next we have lift. This is the force that holds the airplane in the air, and the amount of lift required for straight and level flight must equal our weight. We have drag, the force that acts opposite of the direction of motion. There are multiple kinds of drag, but for our purposes, more stores and more lift will create more drag. And last we have thrust, the force that moves an aircraft in the direction of motion. We typically reference this in jet fighters as pounds of thrust. The more you have, the faster you go. When lift equals weight and thrust equals drag, this will result in straight and level unaccelerated flight. Unfortunately, this isn't the best tactic for shooting down another airplane. In a dogfight, we typically find ourselves in all sorts of orientations. Because of this, once we change our plane's attitude or acceleration, the forces are no longer equal. So let's dig a little deeper into how lift works and how we can manipulate it to work for us. There are two ways we can change how much lift we're generating. We can go faster or we can change our angle of attack. Angle of attack is the angle between the cord line of a fixed wing aircraft and the vector representing the relative motion between the aircraft and the atmosphere. Increasing our angle of attack will increase our lift, but it will create more profile drag and induced drag caused by the wing generating lift. Increasing our angle of attack is a great way to increase our lift, but only to a point. This point is called the critical angle of attack. Critical angle of attack, which is the angle of attack that produces the maximum lift coefficient, or more simply put, anything past the critical angle of attack and the plane will stall. A common sign of getting close to your critical angle of attack is buffeting. In straight and level flight, all of our lift opposes gravity. This is also known as the vertical component of lift. If we were to change our pitch and go vertical, you can see that three of the four forces move with the plane. Weight does not move because it is the force of gravity, which is always vectored towards the center of Earth. And as you approach a vertical 90 degrees, you are generating less and less vertical lift, which means you can only accelerate vertically if your thrust is greater than your drag and weight combined. So now that we know how to fly straight and level and how to change how much lift we are generating, we can also apply this to turning. If we roll our wings and make a turn, we are now taking away from our vertical component of lift and adding some of the lift to the horizontal component of lift, which is the force that pulls the aircraft to the side, causing it to turn. But we can't just roll our aircraft and turn straight and level. Since our vertical component of lift is no longer equal to our weight, we need to increase our lift by increasing our angle of attack. So our vertical component of lift will be equal to our weight. By doing this, we are changing our total lift, which is referred to as our lift vector. The lift vector is the direction of lift and is perpendicular to the direction of movement. The lift vector will be referenced a lot in this series. When visualizing the lift vector, we will typically be talking about it from the pilot's point of view. To visualize the lift vector from the cockpit, simply draw a line from the bottom of your HUD 
directly up through the center of your canopy. Now you know which direction lift is being applied, in case you weren't aware. Another thing to consider is that a lighter plane will have an advantage over the same heavier plane. Good morning! Today's race is promised to be a classic in every sense of the word. In the left lane, rocking the Brown Naval Aviation Warfighting Development Center livery and all the way here from the Naval Air Station Fallon, Nevada, weighing in at a staggering 36,890 pounds, Captain John Slowlerner! And in the right lane, rocking the blue Naval Aviation Warfighting Development Center livery, and also here from the Naval Air Station Fallon, Nevada, weighing in at a measly 28,248 pounds, the current reigning champion, Captain Need for Speed! Blue, you're my boy! Being heavier means the force of gravity is higher, thus more lift is required to maintain level flight, more angle of attack is needed to create more lift, which means more profile drag from increased surface area and induced drag caused by the wing generating lift. Both aircraft would have the same thrust, but the heavier plane benefits less from it. Yeah, yeah, Jabbers, we all know how airplanes work and fly. How does any of this affect my dogfighting ability? Well, we will get to that in the next episode. That's pretty much it for this part of the series. Hopefully, if you didn't know about these things, you have a pretty good understanding about them now. And if you did, well, hopefully this was a good refresher. Remember to leave questions or feedback in the comments section below, and I'll try to answer them. So remember to like and subscribe to get notification of future episodes, and I will catch you guys next time.